Hi, welcome to Bible study at the Prairie Oaks Pulpit Bible study. And we are looking in Deuteronomy chapter 27 before we get back to Joshua chapter 8. And so in Deuteronomy, that is the second time the law is given to the children of Israel, this time at the end of 40 years of being in the wilderness, having left Egypt and given the law the first time at Mount Sinai, then 40 years later, after refusing to go into the, the uh, promised land, the children of those who refused are now on the edge of the promised land, and God has Moses give them, the children, this telling of the law. And so, in the midst of those instructions, here in Deuteronomy 27, is some instructions that are important for us to know today. Now Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you today. And it shall be on the day when you cross over the Jordan to the land which the Lord your God has given you, that you shall set up for yourselves large stones and whitewash them with lime. You shall write on them all the words of this law when you've crossed over, that you may enter the land which the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord God of your fathers promised you. Therefore it shall be when you have crossed over the Jordan that on Mount Ebal you shall set up these stones, which I command you today, and you shall whitewash them with lime. And there you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not use an iron tool on them. You shall build with whole stones the altar of the Lord your God and offer burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God. You shall offer peace offerings and shall eat there and rejoice before the Lord your God. And you shall write very plainly on the stones all the words of this law. Then Moses and the priests, the Levites, spoke to all Israel, saying, Take heed and listen. O Israel, this day you have become the people of the Lord your God. Therefore you shall obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. And then Moses then gives the people instructions. This is the Levites. This is how you are to do this. You're going to have half of you on Mount Ebal, half of you on Mount Gerizim, which is just across a narrow valley from that spot. And he says, there you are going to have the law read to you, but also there's going to be these blessings and cursings, and you're going to affirm each of the blessings and affirm each of the curses from these two mountains. And that's their instructions. We want you to reconfirm the covenant. I want you, once you've in, entered the promised land, I want you to remind yourselves of what God has commanded you to do so that you can stay in the promised land. And I want you to write it on these stones so it's indelibly there, permanently there, so that you can come back to it to remind yourselves, to bear witness to you and to future generations. You have become the people of the Lord your God. Therefore, obey the voice of the Lord your God. Keep those commandments. And I think we can identify that this is, applies to us as well. If we're going to be the people of the Lord and want to receive the blessings, then a part of being in relationship with him is acknowledging that he is God and we are not, and that we will keep his commands. Well, as we saw last week, children of Israel kind of struggled sometimes with that. You know, they defeated Jericho by the Lord's power, and they were specifically told, don't keep anything. Everything of, of metal value goes to the Lord. The rest of it is to be destroyed. But one man and his family chose to disobey and take for themselves. And it brought the curse upon the children of Israel. And so, bringing the curse upon 
everyone. They lost the next battle. And the Lord was no longer with them because they were under the curse. And so until they remove the curse from them by removing that sin and that family from them, then the blessing of God could be back on them. And so in Joshua chapter 8, we see the children of Israel achieve a great victory. And it's a small, modest little town, but at the same time, the Lord uses different methods and actually uses their previous defeat to lure the enemy out so that they can be utterly defeated and victory is attained. And that's where our story picks up then in Joshua chapter 8, verse 30 is that on the heels of this great victory, now Joshua built an altar to the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man has wielded an iron tool. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings, and there in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Then all Israel, with their elders and officers and judges, stood on either side of the ark before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the stranger as well as he who was born among them. Half of them were in front of Mount Gerizim, half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, with the women, the little ones, and the strangers who were living among them. And so you hear it then, that Joshua, there's a few things here that really stick out as this is, is given to us. And one is that it is as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the children of Israel. Did it exactly the way God had commanded it to be done. It kind of just stands out. It's like, well, this is kind of an odd place for this to show up. This isn't even where the battle took place. It's much farther north. Not sure that I, the Canaanites must have fled when the children of Israel came or something because suddenly there's no talk of a battle or anything. May have happened, may not have. But they're there in between these two mountains, the whole children of Israel, and they're doing exactly what the Lord had told them to do. And so he builds an altar first, right? He builds an altar to the Lord God of Israel on Mount Ebal, just as the Lord commanded and what was that? Well, he described it. Use whole stones, not any tool to touch those stones to shape them, but use the rocks as God left them. That's interesting, isn't it? And so these big rocks stacked to make an altar. That's not the way Canaanites make altars. They want to use all their handiwork on it. It's not even like the bronze altar that's at the tabernacle. But this one is to reflect it is God's work, not a man. And so the altar is made and, and assembled there. He wants to obey the command of the Lord. And our instructions there is we need to obey early and we need to obey fully. And that we're building monuments to the Lord, not to ourselves. Because you'll notice that's a pattern with Joshua. He's not building anything for himself. But when they crossed the Jordan River, they made a monument to commemorate that the Lord divided the waters of the Jordan. And now here he is. He's building an altar to worship the Lord. And on that altar, they're going to do burnt offerings and peace offerings, just as the Lord described in Deuteronomy 27. Did you notice that? He specified those two things. Burnt offerings are for consecration. To, to set apart oneself wholly to the Lord. And so that, that offering is burnt wholly to the Lord. 
completely burned up. None of it is reserved, just as we are to give ourselves wholly to the Lord. Present yourself as living sacrifices, as it says in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Not to be conformed to the world, but being transformed into the image of Christ. But then there is peace offerings, and peace offerings are like thanksgiving. They're a time in which this, some of the sacrifice is given to God, but the rest of the sacrifice is consumed in a feast and a, and a meal to fellowship with God and to fellowship with one another and to celebrate in gratitude for what God has done. And so God has richly given, so now we're giving back to him, both all of ourselves and showing gratitude to him. Basically, physical symbol of that spiritual reality that we're sharing with God because God has shared with us. But then the other thing that keeps coming out here in this is that it is done as the servant of the Lord, Moses, had commanded the children of Israel. That's, it is as it is written in the book of the law of Moses over and over again. And that's why I had to start in Deuteronomy 27. As we see, there was a lot of detail put into that even where they were to take place, Mount Ebal, Mount Gerizim. As far as we know, Moses had never been to that place. But the Lord instructed, this is where this is to be done. None of the children of Israel, except maybe Joshua and Caleb, even had been there because they had spied out the land, but that's it. So following God's instructions to the letter, including the blessings and the cursings, because God is a good and gracious God. But if we persist in rebellion against him, he will discipline. He will judge. And so we do not want to be disobeying God, especially out of ignorance. Because see, what they did there was they wrote out the law of the Lord. Sometimes I challenge our people to, to memorize God's word. You know? You can do that at the end of this video. See if you can write out the Ten Commandments. If you can't even write out the Ten Commandments, especially in order, we probably don't know any of the other laws either, right? And that's just the basics. He wrote out all of Deuteronomy. That's a lot more, isn't it? But God had said that your kings shall know the law and write it out. Joshua wasn't a king, but he was fulfilling that role for the children of Israel this time. And aren't we a kingdom of priests? We're to know the law. We're to know who God is and what he instructs us to do, including King Jesus in the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. In the new commandment he gives us and the great commission. All of these are part of his instructions to us, including what he gave through the apostles. And it's to all of us, isn't it? Do you notice that? He says in here that it's the priests, the Levites, the stranger, the men, the women, the little children, and the strangers who are living among them. So whether you are free or slave, you're included in this. Jew or Gentile, if you're in the, in the promised land, you're to do this. In covenant with God. Because God wanted his people to bring others to him. So remember Rahab, her and her family, they're included in this. They'd never heard the law before, but now they're hearing it. And now they're knowing what God expects of them. Men, women, boys, and girls, all included. Anchored in the word of the Lord. They know it so they can obey it. But all of them commit themselves to obey the covenant of the Lord. So that before one another and before God, before God himself, as symbolized by the Ark of the Covenant, they're going to follow the Lord. And so it's interesting here at this point is this renewal of the covenant. The children of Israel are back on the, back on the, the, the right train of thought there, back on the, in the right direction. And they are 
ready to honor God with all their lives. But we'll see how that goes. As you continue to read through Joshua, this was a good generation of people that seemed in obedience. But even they had their struggles at times. God used their struggles to teach later generations of his holiness and his righteousness. Thank you for joining me for this Bible study. I pray that we are hiding God's word in our heart and ready to walk with him. Because here in the new covenant, we've been blessed even greater and have greater things ahead of us than we have today. God bless. God keep you. We'll see you next time.